Well, good morning once again. Welcome to my shop in Billings, Montana. Today, I'm going to do a video on this particular bowl right here. This is one that I stabilized a while ago. It's been sitting there. And I'm going to call this the ugly duckling because, boy, I'll tell you what, it is not very pretty right now. But we'll see what that turns into as we move along with this video. So I'm going to uh, clean up this surface and we'll see what's underneath all this gunk. Now, we'll put that up for just a second. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm probably going to wear a respirator most of the time. This particular respirator was sent to me by uh, Parcel Safety. And there's a link in the description for a little discount on anything you buy from Parcel Safety on their website. So check that out. This is a really, really beautiful respirator. And one note, you can't wear this with glasses, but I'm going to wear a respirator most of this video. And I'm also going to do a voiceover because that's a little bit easier. So let's move forward and let's uh, take a look at this ugly duckling. Yeah. Now throughout this video, you're going to see Ron Brown's natural edge Chuck. And I will have a video on that uh, in the future. Let me walk you through the process of completing this ugly duckling bowl. And part of what you're looking at is some aluminum foil I have on that. And the surface, which is uh, the stabilized resin I used. This piece was not cast, it was stabilized. So I'm going to take that uh, surface off and it really comes off pretty easily. I'm using a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Now I'm going to start by working on the area that I will form a tenon on the bottom of this bowl. As you can see, it comes off pretty easily. I'll work my way around and begin to form that tenon. I'm going to use my Vicmark 120 uh, chuck with two inch jaws. And throughout this video, as I was making it, I kept my respirator on because this is really dusty and you certainly don't want to breathe anything close to this, uh, this dust. It's very nasty. And you can see that on the back of my hand. Very fine dust. I'm just fine tuning that tenon. We'll double check it with my vernier calipers. And I'm going to profile that with a very large point tool ground to the same angle as my chuck jaws. And that works very well. Now I just work my way up the side of that with the draw cut. I can't really do any sort of a push cut on this because my tail stock is in the way. Put a little water on this to show you what it looks like. And it's really, really spectacular. Got some beautiful color. The color is from the stabilizing process. I added a little bit of color to that and some beautiful figure. All right, let's take a look and see what we have so far. This is sort of intermission. Now here is the main event. And I had a big crack right up along the rim here. I'll take this tape off, show you what I got. I've also got some uh, pretty serious cracks right along here. This is following the uh, grain pattern or the growth ring of that bowl. And boy, you got to be careful. So I will be careful. I've got that uh, fortified a little bit with some CA glue, but I will watch it. And um, I just created a little um, dam here with some uh, colored duct tape. And I put some different uh, 
in lace fillers in there from Chromacraft. Ah, there we go. So we'll see what that looks like when I get that turned down, but I had a pretty big crack in there. I wanted to get rid of that. Now, I also showed you another bowl. There's, there's the inside of that bowl. It's a little, I don't know, five inch bowl. And here is the back side of that. Uh, and I'm gonna spray that with a little bit of water. And that is going to be really, really cool. That's like a jewel. I got some uh, turquoise color in that apparently. And at one time when I stabilized that, I put some color in both these pieces. Anyway, the inside's ugly. The outside's getting to be really, really cool. Anyway, let me, now let me get my uh, chuck jaws up here. It will work on the inside of this bowl right here. Now I've decided to go to a scraper to complete the inside of my bowl. I use a couple different uh, size scrapers on this. The one I'm using right here is a traditional scraper with a flat top. Actually the bowl is not very thick and I think this is probably a better choice than trying to do a push cut with the bowl gouge. And this does work fairly well. I have a nice burr on that and uh, it cuts very nicely. And it doesn't take long to remove the gunk from the surface and there's a lot of gunk on there from the stabilizing process. That stabilizing resin tends to sit on the surface as it dries. I did have it covered with aluminum foil, but uh, you can't prevent all of that resin from drying on the surface. Now as I continue to work on the inside of the bowl, I'm getting a little bit of vibration. I think the bowl is probably about a quarter of an inch thick, so I'm taking a little leather pad that I will hold on the back of the bowl to reduce the vibration. And that saves my hand. And it's pretty safe. If it gets caught up in anything, it's just going to come out of my hand and not cause any injury. I've got a split screen here which shows you a couple different views of this process. Now I just go back and forth from the center to the rim and remove layers of this bowl. I'm not cutting very deeply into this bowl so it takes a while and a lot of this footage I have sped up uh, to work through it. It takes a while to do this. So we'll go back to the center of the bowl and work my way out to the rim and I check this periodically to make sure that I get all that uh, stuff from the surface eliminated. It's just that dried cactus juice uh, from the stabilizing process. And I'm adjusting my tool rest here to work on the rim a little bit. I've got some some areas that are split and cracked and I need to remove there remove those they're a little bit dangerous as they spin around there I don't want to get my hand caught in one of those and they're not very attractive so I'm removing um, about a quarter of an inch from the edge of that bowl Got a little bit of uh, that one area down there I need to remove some more of that surface get down to the wood alright I'm ready to do a little bit of sanding and I mean a little bit I'm starting with 120 grit and I have a drill that's actually plugged into the wall I keep that at my American Beauty and it's pretty handy. No batteries on this one. Uh, one thing I really want to show you and uh, 
draw your attention to is my dust collection and you can really see that dust being sucked in there that's a big part of being safe when it comes down to dust eliminate it from the source and you'll be a lot healthier but to me it's important also that you wear a dust mask or some sort of respirator as you do the sanding a little bit of sanding on the rim and it doesn't take much I'm only showing you a couple grits and uh, I think I go to maybe 320 as I finish this and then we'll apply a little bit of finish on this bowl all right I'm excited about getting a finish on this I've got a little bit of my my Sam Maloof mixture here what do we have varnish polyurethane mineral spirits boiled linseed oil all right turn this on slow see what we got here we'll see if this uh, if this pops Now again, I stabilized this. I added some color to it. I did not cast this with resin. It's stabilized in a vacuum chamber. And to be honest, right now, I don't know what kind of wood that, that was. And I got some serious cracks in there, some extremely cool figure right in there. There's a little bit of a a limb going through there yeah very very nice I'm gonna put uh, several more coats of my finish on there make it a little bit more more shiny and buff that up just a little bit now this bowl is not going to be uh, very functional don't don't eat soup out of it okay very decorative I like it all right now again I use my my parcel safety let's turn this off <clears throat> I use my parcel safety uh, dust mask and I'm not sure let me check and see what kind of filters I have in here okay these these are actually uh, filters for vapor but you can certainly use them when you're sanding you can't wear glasses with this uh, respirator, but that's okay. I can see well enough. Maybe, maybe you have contacts. Anyway, very, very nice. I like it. This is actually the first time I used it. Got her a little bit dusty. So, yeah. Anyway, in the description, there's a link to their website, and you can get a 15% discount on anything you buy from there. And I get a little kickback, so I would appreciate it. All right, well, I've got my ugly duckling bowl reversed. The uh, bottom of the bowl is facing you, and I'm going to do probably most of this off camera. Uh, this is pretty well sanded, and you've seen me sand the inside, so there's no sense in showing you that again. I just need to touch up the foot. I'm going to have just a little bit of a foot on there, and then uh, put some finish on it, and I'll show you the finished piece.